Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to continue on with this kind of mini series of Swedish beer reviews that I'm doing for you across December. And today we're going to go to a little place called Eskilstuna. Now it's maybe about an hour or an hour and a half to the west of Stockholm, so meant to be quite a nice little place. But like many places in Sweden these days, it's also home to a brewery. So we're going to go to Eskilstuna Ulkultur, basically Eskilstuna beer culture, and we're going to have a taste of their red ale tonight. And I ordered this one through the mailing system at Sistiem Balaga, and there was a choice of different ones here. But as you know, if you've watched my channel, I really do love red ale. So this was the obvious choice for me for my first visit to this brewery. But hopefully I can do some more of their beers in the fairly near future. But anyway, as is usual with my beer reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you do want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual website links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my future reviews that I'll do from Eskils to Ulkulta. Very first time I'm trying one of their beers, like I said, and all the usual uh, all the usual social media stuff is down there as well. The untapped, my new Twitter account, and also the Facebook page for the channel. So feel free to connect with me in whatever way you wish. And to my Swedish viewers, I do apologize in advance if any of the Swedish pronunciations aren't quite right. I am trying my best, but I've just moved here to Lund, so I'm still learning Swedish. And incidentally, this is my first review filmed in Windows 10, so I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that it actually works. But anyway, to tell you about Eskilstuna Ulkulter, this company was founded by home brewers Arto Okura, Kalko Lakanen, Thomas Hubla, and also Bosse Gustafsson. And these guys all met at the Swedish Home Brewing Championships, and all of them wanted to give Eskilstuna a brewery once again. So they managed to rent a building in the town centre, gain a permit, and then establish a beer bar. And this opened at Christmas back in 2003. So Eskils Tuna Ulkultur, it wasn't however founded until 2005 and this was when the bar began to do really well and they thought well why don't we actually start brewing for ourselves but the founders then started brewing at small scale but in 2007 they had to move to a larger scale because they, they basically outgrew their pub and brewery that they had but when they moved to their new premises many volunteers actually helped with the refurbishment work that was required and in September of 2007 they received their brewing plant from China and began brewing on that large scale kit. But ever since the brewery has been growing very strongly and they've expanded their range in brewing capacity. If you go onto their website they've got a good diff a good few different beers here. Just to list a few of those for you. There's the Imperial Porter, Stoke Lager, Spruce Ale, Double IPA, Barley Wine, Belgisk IPA, Double Bock, Engelsk IPA, Folk Ale, Imperial Stout, Late Ale, Modern Uteo, I'm sorry if the pronunciation is not right there, Mork Lager, which is a dark lager, Pale Ale, Red Ale, Summer Ale, Triple, and also the Winter Ale as well. So there's a good range of beers available from these guys. As I said, check out the brewery website in the description below. It's in Swedish and I'll put the English version there for you as well. Do check it out and you will get an idea of the different beers you can get from these guys. And when I was looking at the website as well, they seem to import a few beers from Spain and from Scotland and all over the place so they seem to get quite a few different beers in all over the place so do keep an eye on the website but anyway let's actually get on to the tasting of this beer um, the website didn't actually have the specs of this beer it just said it was a 4.7% red ale it didn't tell me anything about the malt base or anything on this one there is a little bit of a description on the back but basically it tells you it has a it's designed to be an American red ale it's got a good balance between the malt and the uh, and the hoppy card says it's meant to be um, kind of some tropical fruit, a little bit of citrus, and it says that it's meant to be a really yeah really well blended flavour. This one, and I think it says here as well that it was brewed first in two thousand and six. I don't really want to read the Swedish because, as I say, I'm not very good at that yet. But in the future, hopefully, I can read the Swedish and translate it for you fairly well. But it just tells you a bit about the first this. First of this style was produced in the USA and it's got some likeness to the English ales as well. This one is supposed to be a combination of the two, I think. But yeah, should be really nice. Meant to have some nice citrus and tropical fruit in it. Plain bottle cap on this one, as you can see. It's quite plainly presented. It's got quite a nice simple label on it. And this is similar to the other Eskil Tuna ones here. And you can see this is the building that they're based in now. It's meant to be just like that. They've got an old building in the middle of Eskil's Tuna where they have their bar. So hopefully I can go and visit these guys when I do make it up to Stockholm area. So without further ado, let's crack this guy open. 4.7% red ale. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Some of these beers just explode on you, and that's the first time I've had that happen in quite a wee while, actually. 
So yeah, we'll just need to take it easy with this one I guess. It's not going to pour all that well. Sometimes these beers just do that though. Just need to let the head settle a little bit. That actually went all over the place which was lovely. But yeah, so as you can see from the little pour I've had, there's a huge head on that. Three fingers easily and I've hardly got any actually on the... Uh, in the glass, I have to say, that's quite funny. But we'll just let the head settle a little bit. In you can actually smell the fruits and things coming off this one, but that one just exploded there. I don't know if it's, that must be the transport. It must have been shaken about a good bit when it was actually brought down here. So I'll need to chase Sisti and Balaga up about that. But let's put a little bit more of this into the glass and see how we get on. I'll just pour it slowly and try and contain the head. But yeah, it's actually pouring very much like a Belgian ale. Some of these Belgian beers really give you a huge head. But as you can see, I'll just bring the light over and let you see. It's poured a kind of dark, sort of mahogany, slightly rosewoody colour actually. As you can see, if I put my fingers behind it, there's only a little bit. But you can't see much in the way of carbonation there. Or you can't see through it at all. It's definitely not transparent. If I hold it over to the light, it does actually have a bit of a reddish kind of coppery, almost chestnut colour actually coming off this one. But yeah, it actually looks quite a nice beer. I just wish the head would die down a little bit so I could try a wee bit of it. So we'll see. But yeah, some carbonation visible going up towards the bottom of the head there. Few, quite a lot of little bubbles actually. A little bit of sediment also visible at the bottom of the thing. But that's natural with craft beers. But yeah, very attractive looking beer. And as you can see, the way to describe this head would probably be a slightly beigey kind of creamy colour. So I'll just use my, my mouth actually and just take the red, a little bit of this out. But yeah, I'll have a proper look at the aroma before we pour the rest of this. But yeah, you're not going to get too much of it out underneath this big head unfortunately. But yeah, in terms of the aroma from this one, you've got a nice big kind of bready malt base from this. There's a good bit of sweet caramel malt in there as well. And some kind of biscuity elements too. It's that sort of biscuity syrupy character you're getting from this one. But as the, the thing on the back was saying, there is a bit of a kind of citrusy and aromatic -y character coming out of this. I'll just take a bit more of the head off it. Now. That's not going to work, I'm going to end up drinking the beer. But yeah, good bit of caramel malt in this. A bit of biscuit, but the hops are actually quite prominent in the aroma here. As it was saying on the back, you're getting a good bit of a kind of citrusy character. There's a bit of floral element, there's a bit of a floral element coming out of this beer as well. But some nice, there is a little bit of a kind of red candied fruit element to this beer too. But some nice floral, grassy, aromatic hop coming out of there. But a nice sort of candied, getting a little bug flying around, a nice kind of candied fruit character coming out of this one. But yeah, just get, as I always say with these beers, give them a little bit of a smell before you actually have a go at them. Oh, when you sugar it up a bit more actually, now that the head's gone down I can sugar it up properly. Mm, there's a good bit of the tropical fruit coming out now. A bit of orangey citrus actually, that's a lot better now. Yeah, a nice orangey citrusy note coming off this one. I want to say there's a little bit of a red candied fruit flavour in this too. But yeah, just a nice fresh grassy, slightly aromatic hop coming off this. Some juicy orangey citrus. A little bit of tropical fruit, maybe a kind of um, mango-y character in this one. Quite, quite interesting actually. But yeah, Overall, there is a big presence. I think the caramel on this one's quite sweet and there's a big bready element to it as well. And you can pick up just a little bit of the sort of, um, how do you say, the sort of biscuity, syrupy notes from this one. I'll just put a little bit more of this in and pour it slowly. But as you can see, that this the bottle conditioning on this, I guess, maybe they've had a little bit of a problem with that because it is bubbling up quite a lot, as you can see there. Even from just pouring a little bit, that's not even all of the beer that's in here. There's either that's been bashed around when it's been transported and things, which I wouldn't be surprised at, or the bottle conditioning hasn't worked so well. But you can see, very attractive looking beer. So without further ado, we'll get stuck into this guy. So this is the Red Ale from Eskilstuna Ulkulter, which is up in Eskilstuna near Stockholm. Skål! It's quite nice actually. It's 
So, as I always say with my beer reviews, do let your full palate adjust to sugar the beer around your mouth and let the whole palate adjust before you actually um, before you actually try and take in this beer. It's actually quite, I'm finding this one to be quite hop forward incidentally. Just try and get the last, how much is left of this? It's just a tiny little bit, I'll put the last of it in and we'll just see what happens. There we are. A little bit of sediment coming out there so maybe that'll bring out the malty characteristics just a little bit more. But yeah, I'm finding this beer to be very hop forward. Yeah. Once your palate adjusts a wee bit, you get a bit more of the maltiness coming out. But, it, but in the first instance, this beer comes out as being very hot forward. Yeah. Malty sweetness definitely comes out a little bit later with this beer, actually. Hmm. So, yeah. Once your palate adjusts to the beer, you'll notice in the middle of the palate you've just got a smooth, bready character and that just blankets the middle of the tongue. On top of that, you've got a bit of caramel, quite sweet actually, but not quite as sweet as comes across in the aroma, but there's also a little bit of a biscuity, kind of cereally character, but the beer, I would say, is more hot forward. It's definitely more along the lines of an American red ale, as they were probably saying on the back there. Maybe I've mistranslated the Swedish. I thought it said it was a combination of the American and the English styles, but I think it leans more towards the American side of things. Mm. Yeah, definitely more hoppy characteristics coming out of this one. It's quite, there's a lot of floral aromatic character around the edge of the palate where your the hoppy flavours of the beer will come out. This one is really, it's got quite a bit of kind of floral aromatic and it's actually quite dry in there as well. Yeah, comes across as quite, as quite spicy to me actually as well. I would be interested to know what hops they've put in this one. Yeah. Just behind the very front curve of the tongue, the hoppy characteristics in this one, I should say, maybe in the back corners of the palate, there's a little bit of an earthy character coming out there. As you move further forward, it becomes a little bit of a more smooth earthiness. Then as you move to the corners of the tongue there, there's a good bit of floral, aromatic -y kind of dry and slightly spicy character there. A little bit smoother on the very front edge, maybe a bit more grassy there, but if you move just a little bit behind that, pardon me, there's a little bit more of a kind of oily bubble there and that's where you're getting some of the fruity aspects of the flavour of this beer. Mm. But yeah, in that little oily bubble there's definitely a little bit of an orangey citrus coming out of there. And it's quite nice, it suits the beer, the beer quite well and there's maybe a, even a little bit of herbal character coming out of this beer in the aftertaste which is, is quite interesting. But a kind of orangey citrus flavour really is the, the more lingering one, but I think this beer's a lot more forward on the sort of floral and aromatic and slightly spicy aspects of the flavour. Yeah, I think personally definitely a lot, as I say, a lot more forward on the floral aromatic aspects of the beer. The orangey citrus is there and that little oily bubble behind the front of the tongue. There's a little bit of tropical fruit in there. Maybe a more kind of sour grapefruit or something like that, but it's quite, the, the, the more prominent components of this flavour are definitely floral aromatic hops, but it works well and it is quite nice and quite enjoyable, I have to say. In terms of the mouthfeel of this one, I would say quite mid-bodied. The carbonation is actually fairly active in this one, as you saw, and especially when the beer basically blew up in my face, if you like. It's quite an active, car actively carbonated beer, so watch that if you get this one, especially through its Sisti Amber Logget. It's got quite an oily mouthfeel, this one, I would say, but the hoppy, this kind of dry hoppy characteristics are in there as well, but it's got a nice sweet malt base in there. As I said, in the middle of the tongue, you've got a good malty character with just a little bit of caramel sweetness on top of it. Quite bready, actually, and there's a good bit of dry, hoppy, bitter character and just a little bit of fruity juiciness, though, but in the aftertaste, mainly it's a kind of 
floral aromatic dry character that you're getting from this beer but overall it is really quite nice actually so I would say give this beer a go and see how you get on with it it's quite a nice red ale more forward on the floral aromatic side of things so if that's the sort of thing you go for especially in your sort of American style beers floral aromatic beer lovers then this is probably one you're going to quite enjoy but anyway, I apologise for this video being a little bit longer than the others, but just because of the bottle explosion that sometimes happens. But I thank you for watching beer reviews. If you do happen to have tried this beer before, please let me know your own thoughts on it. Always interesting to hear from you guys that are watching the videos. There's many more Swedish beer reviews for you to come over the month of December, of course, so I hope you enjoy those. But I thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Follow me on the social media things and do let me know some other Swedish beers that you'd like me to have a look I hope you've enjoyed this beer review and slanji for just now. Go and check out Eskilstuna Ulkultur up in Eskilstuna. Skal!